On today's show, we're going to talk about the challenge of shooting NTSC video in a PAL or 25 hertz region. What the problems are, how to resolve them when you can, and how to work around them when you can't. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live two times a week show. Now, two from three down to two, show, two times a week here at youtube.com slash photojoseph. Totally different schedule, and I know I'm going to get this wrong at some point because I'm so used to saying it. It is no longer Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It is now Monday and Thursday. Monday, 1.30 p.m. Pacific time. Thursday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. We have one morning show and one afternoon show per week. That Monday morning show is just killing me. The Friday morning show had a, its own complications, so we've just switched things up a little bit. It is now Monday and Thursday. So hopefully this works out for many of you. I know for some it'll be better, some it won't be. Sorry about that. Okay, so today's topic is specifically about shooting NTSC video in a PAL region. And everything I'm talking about here can be flipped around. You could be shooting PAL video in an NTSC region, exact same logic in here, just different numbers. But the reason that this has come up is because, as many of you know, I just returned from India. I live in North America. I just returned from India where I was shooting 30p video for my broadcast here and so on, and um, ran into this problem with the 25 hertz frequency and the flickering lights that you get with that, the flickers that you get in video. And some of you might be thinking, well, hold on, I've traveled all over the world, I've never had this problem before. It kind of depends on how your camera is set up, whether you're going to run into it or not, but if you're shooting, I'm going to say higher end, closer to pro video, it is something you are very, very likely to run into, and depending on your camera, you may or may not be able to easily work around it. So. Let's start with the basis of the problem. I'm not going to get super technical on the problems, on the reasoning behind it. If you want more technical, then just Google it. You'll get all kinds of interesting information. But here's the, the crux of it. In North America, we run on a 110 volt, 30 hertz electrical system. That, that system, that basis, kind of defines a lot of stuff that we do, including television, which runs at 30 frames per second. It's actually 29.97. That has to do with an audio sync thing. Don't worry about that. Um, but the 110, 30 hertz, we run at 30 frame per second video, that lines up. That means that our frame rate lines up with our frequency of lights, the lights that flicker, because you know anything except for good LED lights has a flicker to it. Um, you especially, you sometimes even see it with the naked eye on really crappy lights, but you'll really see it on video, especially things like fluorescent lights. They do horrible, horrible flickering. When you go to a, well, most of the rest of the world, that is a 220 volt, 25 hertz region, 25 hertz syncs over to video as PAL. We know that as PAL, 25 frame per second or 50 frame per second. It just doubles. Um, and that's all fine and good over there. But when you try and mix the two things, it doesn't really work, right? If you take a PAL video, 25 frame per second video, try and play it on an NTSC TV, it doesn't work. Same thing vice versa. NTSC video doesn't play on PAL TV. And it comes, it, it comes into play even when you're shooting the video, which is the, the whole discussion point here. When you point a camera at a light source that isn't in the same frequency, you get waves in it. And it is fortunately, for the most part, easy enough to eliminate those if you know what you're looking for. It turns out that it's not just the frame rate that you're shooting at, it's also the shutter speed or shutter angle that the camera is set to. It's a combination of things that will allow you to eliminate that wave or see it, if, as the case may be. Now, um, the video that you're watching today, if you're watching live, this is going to get a little bit extra complicated. If you're watching live, you are watching this at 24p, which really screws up the whole demo thing, but that's just how I, that's how my switching system is set up. I can't change that. It's at 24p. If you're watching this not live, you will be seeing it at 2997, which means that the sample video that I will play for you, if you're watching not live, will be cleaner and look more like it's supposed to. The sample video that I'm going to play if you're watching live, you're going to see a little extra stuttering in there that you shouldn't because you're watching a 24p playback. I know it's a whole thing, but I just wanted to lay that out there right now. If you're watching live, you're watching a 24p. If you're not watching it live, you're watching a 2997. This video of me not live is going to have a little bit of a stutter to it, but when I get to the sample video, it'll be fine. Okay, so that's, that's just wanted to get that out of the way while I remembered it. The second thing I want to get out of the way is shutter speed versus shutter angle. I'm going to be talking about both in here, however, recognizing that most higher, only higher end cameras are going to have the ability to shoot in shutter angle. Most cameras are only limited to shutter speed. If you don't know the difference between shutter speed and shutter angle, I encourage you to watch this video up here. There's a video up there that I did before explaining the difference between them, why it matters, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you don't have to watch that to understand what's happening here today, but it will help you with the kind of background and a little bit more of the basis behind it. Part of the basis that is an important thing to understand is your standard, default, normal, um, desirable shutter speed or shutter angle. 
So that part, I discussed that in great depth in that video about shutter speed versus shutter angle, but I'm going to cover it very briefly here just to lay the groundwork for it because this groundwork is important. If you're shooting shutter speed, generally what you want is a shutter speed that is double your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, you want a shutter speed that is a 60th of a second. If you're shooting 60 frames per second, you want a shutter speed that is 120th of a second. Your camera very, very unlikely has a 120th setting. It'll have 1 125th, which is where you're going to set it to because it's kind of like, eh, it's close enough. Uh, very unlikely it has a 1 20th of a setting. When you're shooting 30p, you're not actually shooting 30, you're shooting 29.97. So that 60th of a second isn't really exactly right. It should be like 159.94 of a second, but your camera doesn't have that either, which is where shutter angle comes into play. Shutter angle, you set your shutter angle to 180 degrees. That's exactly half of the 360 circle. Again, I'll explain that video up there, but that gives you the optimal shutter angle slash shutter speed, no matter what frame rate you set your video to. Why does that matter? Well, optimal has to do with the, the desired, the optimal amount of motion blur in a scene. You want a little bit, you don't want too much, um, and that's just kind of universally accepted as what looks the best. It's not a locked in, it has to be that. Absolutely not. That's just kind of the universally accepted. So I say all of this to say that when you break out your camera, you put it into video mode, and you're kind of in a default mode, your camera, if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, is most likely going to try and shoot at 1 60th of a second. If you're shooting 60p video, 59.94 frames per second, it is most likely going to try to shoot at 125th of a second. Great. OK, so that's fine when you're shooting 30 frame or 60 frame in an NTSC region. But you step into a PAL region, and you start seeing all these waves across the video. The good news is that it's very easy to fix by simply changing your sputter, shutter speed, your sputter sheet, your shutter speed to a, a multiple of that 25 hertz, which would be 1 100th of a second. Very, very easy fix. You go from 1 25th of a second to 100th, or from 1 30th to 1 50th of a second. At 1 50th, it goes away. At 1 100th of a second, it goes away, and you're done. And you'd think that's all I need to know. And for the vast majority of you out there, that is all you need to know. You set it to that, and you're going to be just fine. However, there's a lot of cases where it doesn't work that way. So let's start by looking through the camera at the actual problem, and we'll see it actually get fixed. Now, this gets even more fun complicated because I am currently in an NTSC region. So I have, I'm going to demonstrate this the reverse of what I'm talking about. But like I said in the beginning, it's all the same. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but I am going to be, I have this camera set to PAL right now, and I'm in an NTSC region. Now, as I also said, most good LED lights, you're not going to see the problem. So I could point this all over my shooting studio here, and you would not see the problem. I have some light spilling on a wall over here from a standard light bulb that does exhibit the problem. So let's take a look, first of all, through the camera menu here. And let's just see, uh, let's get the right one. There we go. And you see that my system frequency is set to 50 hertz. So the camera is set to PAL. And if we look at the whole camera in here, you'll see up at the top left, it says 25p. We're shooting at 25 frames per second. And you see at the bottom, it says 1 100th of a second. Now, that 1 100th, as you can see kind of bottom left, see it says 3.9, that's the aperture, and then 100. That's the, that's the uh, shutter speed. Again, remembering that I'm now shooting in PAL, so the numbers are a bit backwards from what I was just talking about. But in a PAL situation, a 1 100th of a second would be your ideal, your optimal shutter speed, or 50th of a second. Actually, it would be 50th because we're shooting 25p, so let me just drop that down to 50th. But when I point this at an NTSC light source, we're going to see the flicker. So here we go. Let's put this on. I'll just point this at the camera over here and look at the wall in the background. Do you see that wave happening in the background there? See it? You can kind of, it's just a little, little tough to see, but it's there. You see that wave. Let me set this up to a 100th of a second, and it's still there. See, the wave is still there. So what I need is a shutter speed that is going to match the light frequency. In this case, I can go to 125th, and it goes away. At 125th, it's close enough. It should be 120th, but it's close enough. Or if we go down to a 60th of a second, that also lines up with it. Looks perfect. The wave goes away. If I go to 30th, it also goes away. But again, if I go to a 40th, you can sort of see the flicker there. 50th, you definitely see the flicker. So that's, that's what you're looking for, right? It's that wave that's happening in the video. And by simply adjusting your shutter speed, you should be able to compensate for it. OK, so now you've seen it kind of in a live, simple thing here. Now I'm going to play back some clips. And I'm going to jump back and forth and play back some clips that were shot in India that show the problem really dramatically, show the problem less dramatically. And then we're going to look at the solution, uh, the same solution we saw here, but seeing it kind of in real uh, from footage that actually shot in India. 
And then we're going to make the problem much more complicated by moving into high speed video and then moving into a camera that you don't have the control over the shutter speed. That's where things get really, really interesting here. So let us start by taking a look at a first clip here that is absolutely awful. So this is shot in the Lumix G9. It shot, the camera was set to NTSC. It was shot at either 2997 or 5994. I was kind of uh, alternating back and forth between them. I had different custom presets set up, just depending on what I was shooting. Uh, for the most part, I shot at 60p. So that's probably what this clip is. It doesn't matter, though. And this was shot at 1 1 25th of a second, which was my default setting, right? That was my default because that is the optimal shutter speed. Remembering that the G9 does not have shutter angle. It only has shutter speed. So 1 25th of a second is my ideal optimal shutter speed. Okay, watch what happens when I hit play. This is a really, really strong example of it. So play that again. Really, really awful example of that. So that clearly, no bueno. We don't like that. So, okay, easy fix, right? Oh, actually, before we fix it, let me look at one more example. This one's not as bad, but you can kind of see it. So let me play that again. You can kind of see some of the flickering, especially on the striped shirt. You're really seeing it there. So that's, that is the inherent problem. And again, let me remind you, for those of you watching live, you're seeing a 2997 get converted to 24p. So that stuttering that you're seeing in the video is that conversion. It's not the light flickering for those of you watching not live. You should have seen the video playback very nice and smoothly. Um, but of course, you still have the light flickering in there. All right. Incidentally, folks, um, if you are watching live and you have questions, make sure you pop your questions into the live chat. Make sure you put at photo Joseph in front of it. That way I will see it. And at the end of the show, we'll switch over to the Q&A and I'll do my best to answer all of your questions. But get that, uh, get that in there, will you? Okay. I'll get that uh, question in there with at photo Joseph in front of it. Okay. So now we switch it to, to a hundredth of a second. 1 one hundredth of a second shutter speed, and the problem goes away completely. So here's standard video, 2997 or 5994 at a 1 one hundredth of a second, and we see there is absolutely no flickering at all. Super. All right, so that's awesome. So that's the easy fix, right? That is the easy thing to do. Just set it to 1 one hundredth of a second. Again, if that's all you're doing, that's all you need. Take care. Have a good day. But now I want to shoot high speed video, slow motion video, high speed video, high frame rate. The G9 does 180 frame per second video. It does not give you manual control, and it does not give you any other options. It only shoots 180 frame per second, which is crazy awesome. 180 frame per second, really beautiful slow motion. But <laughs> what's the shutter speed going to be? What's going to happen? You don't have any control over it. So I'm assuming in a shutter speed of 100th of a second here, although I realize that I really don't actually know. But it doesn't matter, because here's what happens when you shoot slow motion with, uh, at 180 frame per second with a camera that you can't control the shutter speed on. Here's what you get. The same flickering we saw earlier, but it's sped up. Obviously, we're seeing things play back more slow motion. So let me do that again. Sped up. That's horrible. So that is clearly unusable. So you shoot that, and you're going, wait a second. I can't shoot any slow motion where there is any, unna any unnatural light, any artificial light in the scene. It's, the timing on this is, is kind of funny. Um, I'm sure many of you enjoy Peter McKinnon's work. And um, Peter McKinnon and Matty uh, Hopia, is that right? Yeah, Matty, uh, his friend Matty, they both were just in Dubai. They both just released videos over the last couple of days of their, sh their, their, their trip there. Both of them need to watch this video because both of them had this problem. All of their video that was shot under artificial light has this horrible flickering to it. And their slow motion stuff, which like Peter's, you know, the super god of slow motion, it's all got this horrible pulsing to it. And I'm sorry, but Peter needs to watch this because this is this would have fixed the problem. Or maybe his camera can't do it. I don't really know what kind of options he has off the Canon that he shoots with. But um, but this is the problem that he runs into. And if you watch that video and you see all that flickering light, that is why. Okay, so sorry guys. Anyway, so back to this. Um, so when we just play that again, you see there you're getting this really, really awful flickering. So what is the solution? Well, unfortunately, if you are shooting with a camera where you don't have much control over it, there isn't one. There is nothing that you can do to get clean slow motion video on an NTSC camera shooting in a PAL region. Ain't going to happen, at least not at 180 frames per second. So what do you do? Well, fortunately for me, I was traveling with the GH5S as well. The GH5S has a couple of options on it that I can take advantage of. I could have switched it over to PAL, uh, but then I'd have to rematch that stuff back to my NTSC footage. That's not what I wanted to do. The camera gives me more options for my uh, variable frame rate. Right? It has a whole series of options from all the way up to 240 frames per second. 
and it gives me total control over the shutter speed or even shutter angle if I want to shoot that way, which I in fact did. Okay, so now how do I know? This gets to the next big tough question. How do I know what the right shutter speed or shutter angle is to shoot at at any given frame rate? For that, there are calculators. There's a bunch of these online. I'm sure there's even apps for it. The one that I really like is from RED, the camera company. Let me find the right page here. Here we go. And RED Camera Company, if you go to red.com slash flicker dash free dash video, I have linked to this down below, of course. Um, or if you just Google red.com and flicker free video, you will find it. It is a lovely, lovely web page that allows you to choose your power frequency, where are you shooting, in 50 hertz or 60 hertz, and what frame rate are you shooting at. So here's, here's the, the easy part of this, right? Let's do 50 hertz. And if I was shooting at 29.97 and I hit calculate, it tells me that I need to shoot at a 1 one hundredth of a second, a 50th of a second, or 1 33 and a third second. Most cameras aren't going to do that, so 1 one hundredth or 1 50th are going to be ideal. If I'm shooting in shutter angles, 104.4, 208.8, or 313.2, shuttered angle will work. Now, here's a, a kind of a funny thing about this calculator that I did not know when I was there. If you load this up on your phone, which I was doing, the number pad that comes up doesn't give you a decimal point. So I could not type in 29.97. So I typed in 30. Fortunately, at this point, it's so close that it doesn't actually matter, at least not visibly, nothing that I could see would matter. But there is a difference between 30 and 29.97. And just to kind of point this out, it's kind of amusing. Uh, safe shutter angles, you see there, 1044, 2888, 313.2, uh, and then corresponding shutter speeds, 1 100th, 1 50th. Let me set this to 30 and hit calculate again. Those numbers all change, these stay the same. The shutter speed stays the same, the safe shutter angles change. And quite a bit, right? It's quite a you know, 108 versus, what was it, 104.4. Um, but here's the funny thing about this calculator. This 29.97, you don't actually have to enter 29.97. If you just type in 29, it assumes 29.97. If I hit calculate, it gives me the same numbers. So if I go just go back to 30 and hit calculate, there's the 30. If I just type in 29 and hit calculate, it gives me the same as 29.97. I tell you this as a PSA because if you are using this app on your phone and you find that you can't type in 29.97, just remember, type in 29, it's the same thing. I, I don't know why you think that, it, but anyways, just it is what it is. So I was basing, I did all of mine based off of 30 because I didn't know that. Fortunately, 30 is close enough. And as you saw, the shutter speed is the same. Okay, so now I've got the calculator broken up. I've got my GH5S, which I can set to a variety of different uh, high speed frame rates. And I start at the highest frame rate of 240 frames per second. And I go, well, let's see what it is. So I want to shoot in 50 hertz. I want to shoot in 240 frames per second. And I hit calculate, and it says none. No safe shutter angle, no safe shutter speed. Well. That kind of sucks. Let's go to 180. That's what the G9 was shooting at. Calculate, none. There is no safe shutter angle. There is no shutter angle or shutter speed that is going to let you shoot at that frame rate under that frequency of light. Whoa, well, that kind of sucks. So then I go in and I start punching in the numbers, going slower and slower and slower to see at what point, what is the highest frame rate that the GH5S is capable of shooting that, will, that I can calculate a corresponding frame uh, uh, shutter speed or shutter angle to shoot at. And the answer is 90. 90 frames per second was the fastest. So I type in 90 and I get a 324 degree angle or that famous 1 100th of a second shutter speed. Okay, so that's what I can do. So now let's go back to this video and we'll go to the next shot. So this is now um, just standard video. This is not slow motion. This is standard video at 260 degree shutter because that's a uh, 216 degree shutter. But here's the slow motion. 90 frame per second slow motion, so it's not as slow as the 180, but a 324 degree shutter, and now we're getting the perfect slow motion without any of that flickering. So that's part two of this whole equation. If you want to shoot at a high frame rate, you have to be able to dial in a shutter speed or shutter angle that is going to match it. There is no corresponding shutter angle at 180 degrees, so even if I had complete control on the G9 over the shutter speed, there would never have been, uh, when shooting slow motion, there would never have been a setting that would have worked because you just can't shoot at 180 FPS. It just doesn't work. So, bummer, right? But thank God I had this. Okay, so there's, there's that part of it. So you've got your 
your everybody's got everybody's DSLR or DSLM that shoots high high speed video will give you um, some amount of control. If you forget about the high speed video, just set it to one one hundredth of a second, you're good. So that's part one solved. Shooting high speed video, probably not going to be able to do it with something like the G9. You can do it with the GH5 or the GH5S because you have that level of control. Excellent. Now let's move on to step three, phase three of this, and that is shooting with a camera like this, the GoPro. So the GoPro does both NTSC and PAL, which is awesome. The G9 doesn't do that, right? The G9 does, you can buy it on either NTSC or PAL, but it doesn't switch. The GH5, GH5S, they switch. The GoPro switches. Cool, right? So when you switch it, the camera reboots, and you're off into a PAL, um, PAL setting or an NTSC setting. You can choose 25 frame per second or 50 frame per second in, in PAL. You can choose 30p or 60p in NTSC. There's other options as well, but you know, for our basic standards. But what you cannot do, what you cannot do is set a shutter speed that will work. So if I'm setting the camera to 2997, I cannot choose a shutter speed of 1 100th of a second. The camera doesn't have that option. You can go into the kind of pro, what are they called, pro tune settings, I think, if you have some degree of control, but you cannot choose a shutter speed, and obviously we don't have shutter angle, but you cannot choose a shutter speed that works. So what are we going to do? Well, let's, let me see here. What do I have first? First, let's take a look at some footage shot with the GoPro in NTSC mode under PAL lighting and see how this looks. That's step one here. So this is what we get. This is actually in Tokyo on my layover. So this is GoPro. We shot at 2997 or 5994 at a 60th of a second because that's what it does. And oh boy, that is nasty. Look at all that flickering lights. Great demo shot because there's so many lights in there, but really, really bad flicker in there. So that's clearly not going to work for us, right? So can't do that. All right, so now let's go to, uh, let's switch the camera over to PAL. So if I switch the camera to PAL, which I can do, I will now have my option to shoot at 125th or 150th of a second shutter speed, or just leave it in auto, and it, whichever one it chooses, because those are the only options that it's going to choose from, is going to be fine. Okay, cool. So now here's a test. Um, I'm talking in this, but it doesn't matter. You're not going to see it. But um, here's a test where we're shooting at a PAL setting under artificial lighting, and it should look just fine. And in fact, it does. So again, the stuttering that you're seeing here now, no matter where you're watching it, you're definitely be seeing stuttering because we are mapping 25p to a 30p timeline, which is the other part of this problem. We'll come to that. Okay, so now we're shooting with PAL setting at the 25 or 50 frames per second, it's going to automatically shoot at the appropriate shutter speed, and it works great, and it looks fantastic. But the problem is that when we drop this onto our NTSC timeline, it's not going to look good. The problem when you take a clip that was shot at a, the wrong frame rate and drop it onto a mismatched timeline is that frames have to get added. I don't know exactly what the math is on this, but you're you're basically looking at, in the world of film, we call it a 3-2 pull down as part of the telecine process where you went from 24 frame film to 30 frame video. And for every four frames of film, a fifth frame had to be added. That was the 3-2 pull down method. If you want to know more about that, just Google 3-2 pull down. You'll read all about it. It's like an A, B, C, D frame. It adds a frame between the B and the C or something. Uh, anyway, um, it has to add a frame. And so you get this stutter, this slight stutter that you see. And if it's a really, really good calculation and it's barely noticeable, it's one of those things that most people never see it. Someone who knows what they're looking for, they go, oh yeah, that's a problem. Um, but for most people, probably never see it. But you know, for those who know, you, you see it, and it's annoying. It's same problem, different cadence, but same problem happens when you take 25 frame per second footage and drop it onto a 30p timeline. The frames don't match, so now you have to add frames in that didn't exist, and so you see a little bit of a stutter that happens. A way around that would be to, be to simply remap the clip at the same frame rate that you dropped it in at, meaning that you play one frame of video per one frame on the timeline. So instead of playing 25 frames per second, you just re you forget about the timing and you play back one frame at every frame that you're playing back at a 2997. So if you're shooting 25p and you drop it onto a 30p timeline, the speed calculation is 60%. So what you end up with is, oh, here's actually, before I go into that, here is another example of the video, the uh, PAL video playing back on a 2997 timeline and you can see there's some weird stuttering, weird jumping happening in there, especially if you look at the wall, uh, the kind of uh, angled line there, you can, you can see little hiccups in there. It's a little bit odd. So that, that is the inherent problem. Okay, so let's take a 50p piece and drop it onto a 2997 timeline and slow it down. So now, and again, you're not going to see it properly because you're looking at a 24 frame conversion just to make it even more complicated. 
But now you're going to see it play back smoothly, frame for frame. However, however, it's slow motion. Right? If we look at the timeline here, let's back out of this. You can actually, because this is still in Final Cut. Um, you're going to see a time, you're going to see a slowdown of that video. So, okay, this one is not slowed down yet. This shot here is slowed down. So now playing at 60% speed, you can see it slowed down, which is fine if you're talking about like a walking shot like this. Not so good, not so good if you're talking about somebody talking. So this one here is me talking. So if I was to go in here and fix this, and here's how we do it. We can do it, we can choose it, and under Final Cut, you can just say automatic speed. It is going to automatically retime it, and it times it down to 60% speed, which means obviously if I'm talking, that is no longer going to make sense. So now I've got this slowed down clip that will play nicely. It looks nice, but if there's any dialogue in there, you're screwed because now you've got slow motion talking, and that's obviously not going to be good. Although I know a lot of you watching this wish that I would talk more slowly, but that's how you do it. You just set it to slower, and off you go. Anyway. Um, so that's, that's the problem that you can't work around, but it is the closest, way, closest thing that you have to work around. So if you're shooting with a camera like the GoPro in a PAL region, set the camera to PAL, set it to PAL when you're not shooting any dialogue. And then you should set it to 50p, not 25, because if you set it to 50, then, almost forgot that I was going to show you this part, then what you get is, let's go back to this, and let me choose this clip here, automatic time this one. So this actually, before we even do it, let me load this up here, load up the info. What we're looking at here is a 50p piece. So this one was shot at 50p. Now when I take that clip and I go up here and I say automatic speed, that 60% slowdown is now going to look really, really nice for that. So it just, this is like a nice little slow playback and it just works for that. If I had shot it at 25p, then it would become 120% speed. That's what I wanted to show you. I thought I had a clip on there, but apparently not. Plays at 125%, so now it's too fast. So you get like a fast motion thing. So if you're going to set your camera to PAL, make sure that you're shooting at 50p so that you retime re it back to 30, and it's going to look clean. I realize this last part of the show is just a little bit confusing. Sorry, I kind of botched the planning of this part, apparently. But that's the, that's the ticket. So set it to PAL, set it to 50p, retime it back to 30p on your timeline, and it looks good. If, however, you're shooting a talking head, then you're going to want to set it to 25. Um, uh, well, actually, it doesn't matter if you're 25 or 50, but you're just not going to be able to retime it. So you're going to have that little bit of a stuttering in the video playback. And that's just, you're just going to have to deal with that. There's no way to get eliminate the video flicker and eliminate the stuttering if you're shooting PAL video and dropping it onto an NTSC timeline. Like, you can't do both. You've got to pick one or the other. So whew, there you go. I hope that last part made sense. OK. I know, it's a confusing topic, which is why I wanted to really break it down like this. And hopefully that was somewhat, <laughs> somewhat educational and you guys learned a thing or two out there. Okay, um, we're going to switch over to the Q&A portion of the show. So once again, for those of you watching the, uh, the show live, if you have questions, get it into the live chat. Make sure you put at Photo Joseph in front of it. And we're going to switch over to the Q&A portion right now.